Beneath the rugged landscapes of Ethiopia, ancient forces are constantly changing. Beneath the surface, a colossal volcanic eruption in the country ripped through our planet. Our next report explaining how there is a slow but relentless tearing apart of Africa's crust taking place. Take a look. A silent monster is waking beneath Africa and the continent is starting to crack. In Ethiopia, the Haley Gubi volcano erupted on Sunday. It sent a cloud of ash and smoke high into the air, prompting flight cancellations as hot clouds drifted toward other countries as far as India and China. The long dormant Haile Gubi volcano, located in the Afar region near the Eritrean border, erupted for the first time in nearly 12,000 years. But in this specific case, since it is Ertali range, uh, which is uh, Ertali is a magma lake, as you know. So the magma is not uh, very deep, it is just close to the surface. So this eruption went off uh, with no much earthquake activity. But it, but it was energetic enough to cause a very huge plume, uh, volcano, volcanic plume in the atmosphere. Volcanoes, faults and fire are rewriting the map of our planet in real time. And now, scientists say a brand new ocean is being born under our feet. A dramatic geological shift is ripping through East Africa. A tear so vast, it could redraw global geography. Deep inside Ethiopia's Afar region, one of the world's hottest volcanic zones has revealed the raw mechanics of how a continent splits. Massive fissures are carving the earth apart, and the ground is stretching like pulled dao. Over the next five to ten million years, geologists project that the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden will flood the entire 6,000-kilometer-long rift system the Horn of Africa will become a massive island continent. Landlocked nations like Uganda and Zambia will find themselves with entirely new coastlines. Scientists say the process mirrors the early stages of the Atlantic Ocean's formation. What we are witnessing today is how continents die and how new worlds are born. Even more astonishing, satellites now track Africa's slow motion breakup by the millimeter. The rift grows every year, widening along a 3,000-kilometer fault line from Mozambique to Ethiopia. Entire nations may someday stand on opposite sides of a future sea. The earth is moving, the map is changing, and humanity is watching the birth of a new ocean live in real time. Bureau Report, V on, World is One. Berlin's dream of hosting another Olympic Games running into a hard wall of public resistance. There's a lot happening there. A new survey showing a clear majority of residents want it to step back from any bid for the 2036, 2040 or even 2044 Summer Games. The numbers are not close, by the way. According to a poll conducted for a newspaper, 67% of the people saying they oppose the idea of the capital putting its name forward, only 27% support it, while 6% remain undecided. The results coming at a time when the national debate over a German Olympic bid is only heating up, new citizens' movement is preparing to launch a referendum of its own at the start of next year. The tensions building up because the timing is tight. Even if the people push for a citywide vote, the earliest a government organized referendum could take place is 2027. And by then, the German Olympic Sports Confederation will already have made up its decision, its mind. In fact, the DOSP plans to choose Germany's candidate city or region in the third quarter of 2026. And they have not yet decided which edition of the Games, 2036 
2040 or 2044, Germany intends to pursue. Berlin is not alone in that race, by the way. Hamburg, Munich and another region all lining up their pitches. Munich, in fact, is already securing public support with residents voting in favor of moving ahead. International competition is just as fierce. India, Indonesia, Turkey, Qatar, Chile have all officially announced their intentions to bid for the 2036 Olympics. In Hong Kong, meanwhile, business leaders have floated the idea of a joint bid, also involving National Games co-hosts Macau as well as Shenzhen and Guangzhou in the name of the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Still, Berlin's Olympic representatives are not panicking as such, despite the bleak numbers. One of the city's lead Olympic planners insisting enthusiasm will rise once again once the full campaign gets underway. And he argues that the debate is simply part of Berlin's political nature and that big support often emerges at the final stage. In fact, the president of the Berlin State Sports Federation echoing that same viewpoint, he says other internal polls show higher approval and that there is no reason as such to see the new survey as a fatal blow. But he also admits that the results reveal a clear challenge. Public opinion must be shifted and winning that trust will require action. Planners are saying the city will launch a comprehensive outreach campaign in September 2026, timed to coincide with the DOSP's decision process. They promise targeted efforts to address the criticism, rebuild the confidence, and engage the skeptical residents and their concerns. But history is also looming over this debate. Remember, Germany has hosted the Summer Games twice in Berlin in 1936 and in Munich in 1972. Several bids since then have collapsed, often because the voters rejected them at the ballot box. So while the Olympic spotlight edges closer, Germany's capital is facing a big question. Can Berlin convince its own citizens before it tries to convince the world? Two of India's neighbors slipping back into financial trouble. Pakistan is under intense scrutiny from the IMF for deep-rooted corruption. In Bangladesh, a World Bank report saying poverty is rising again after years of progress. Let's just break this down for you and tell you what the latest assessments are actually showing. The International Monetary Fund's new governance diagnostic says Pakistan's economic system is being held back by elite capture, privileged access to resources and weak accountability. Not just that, the report says that the country will remain trapped in economic stagnation, dependency, widening inequality. The IMF says Pakistan's economy is being held back by deep corruption and elite control. A small group continues to shape policies and benefit disproportionately. Whereas the report also highlights that military-linked groups like the Fauci Foundation hold massive assets and decades of land allotments have further concentrated power in the hands of senior officers. The IMF warns corruption has eroded growth, weakened tax collection and left public services underfunded. It further says Pakistan needs transparency, stronger institutions and tighter checks on the military commercial power to avoid long-term stagnation. In Bangladesh, meanwhile, the situation is very different but equally worrying. According to the World Bank, the country's GDP growth has slowed to around 4%, almost like the COVID-19 period. In fact, Bangladesh's economy has slowed. The World Bank says it has pushed nearly 2 million people back into poverty. The poverty rate expected to rise to 21.2%. More than 60 million people remain just above the poverty line, highly exposed to inflation, and job losses. The report showing Bangladesh's poverty reduction model was always fragile. Slower growth now delivers much weaker poverty gains. Job quality has fallen. Labor income's role in lifting people out of poverty has dropped sharply. With low savings, limited safety nets, even a small shock can push families back down. In sharp contrast, India's poverty trajectory is moving the other way. World Bank estimates showing that poverty has dropped from over 60% to about 28% in a decade and more than 248 million people have moved out of multidimensional poverty, making India one of the rare bright spots in the region.
To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.